Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. I am Brittany. And we are Modern Millennial Events. Welcome to our series, Explore Like a Local. If you'd like to learn more about who we are, check out our intro video. The link is in the description below. On today's episode, we're gonna be venturing around the beach town of Dana Point, which is one of Orange County's hidden gems. This coastal resort area is known for its claim to fame whale watching and its surfing heritage. And it's just all waiting to be discovered. From water sports to boat cruises, delicious food, and boutique shopping, Dana Point is a perfect leisure destination or for co corporate travel as well. Get out on the town or just sit down at the beach and soak up the sun all day. <laughs> Whichever your preference, we're here to tell you all the fun activities to experience while you're in Dana Point. Now let's begin exploring. Welcome to Explore Like a Local. Join us as we venture our treasured communities in Southern California and showcase the best things to do while you're in town. The experiences we're highlighting are great for our clientele in the corporate events world and even for couples on a getaway, family vacations, friend groups, and really anyone that is a travel junkie. Now let's begin exploring. Dana Point's history dates back to the San Juan Capistrano mission days, as it was home to a popular port for trade ships exporting hides from the missions. You can learn all about San Juan Capistrano and the birthplace of Orange County in our San Juan Capistrano video. When Mexico owned the California province in the mid-1800s, Richard Henry Dana boarded the brig Pilgrim in Boston and set sail for California going through the Cape Horn route. When he arrived in California on the Pilgrim, he spent two years assisting with high trading up the coast of California. Dana Point was the trickiest port that he encountered during his travels. We had the jagged rocks, the massive cliffs, and the killer waves. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, really difficult to <laughs> get in and off the boat and get the heights you know, on the ship and off the ship and whatnot. He documented his journey through his uh, famous journal called Two Years Before the Mast, mm -hmm. and many years later, Dana Point decided to name the town after him, and I really couldn't figure out why they named it after him. I just was doing some research, and basically what I found is that he called Dana Point the only romantic spot on the California coast. So. Don't love a fair with the rugged landscape he, kind of thing. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, but he does have a long list of achievements. So he graduated from Harvard as a lawyer, and he was the U.S. attorney um, during the Civil Rights Movement, and he was a strong supporter of abolishing slavery. So, not really like a good, good person, person to yeah. represent Dana Point. <laughs> Definitely a good person to represent. So, um, it really wasn't until 1926 when the growth of San Juan Capistrano influenced the growth of Dana Point. The Dana Point, Dana Point Syndicate was formed. And they built, you know, all the town, and they actually called the historic area now the Lantern District. They were inspired by the lanterns that hung from the tall ships and the sailboats out in the port and gave it its name. Nice. Yeah. Shortly after the construction of Dana Point began, this new coastal town became a hotspot for tourists and celebrities and surfers. The beaches were full of campgrounds, uh, picnic mm -hmm. uh, areas, bonfire pits, and public facilities. Um, and it just made it one of the best vacation spots along the coast. Embedded in Dana Point's roots is surf culture. Huntington Beach is known as Surf City USA, and Hawaii is known as the birthplace of stand-up surfing. But Dana Point's got surf culture. <laughs> How's that different? Is that like <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> How's it different? Well, Dana Point was a legendary surf spot in the early 1900s, mm -hmm. and it was because of the Killer Dana. Okay. Yeah, Killer Dana, it was a wave that broke at the headland in Dana Point, and it was the only spot on the coast that consistently held a 12 to 15 foot swell. Wow. Yeah, so it made it a rarity on the area and surfers just like congregated to Dana Point. Then, uh, Holy Alter was the first person ever to open a surf shop mm -hmm. in Dana Point and then he also started to mass produce foam surfboards, making them super light and super affordable and accessible around the world. Yeah, and then, then we had the Surf Culture Magazine start, um, it started in Dana Point, right shortly after the shop opened. And then you have the iconic Endless Summer documentary that was filmed and produced by a local Dana Point resident named Bruce Brown. 
Wow. So all those uh, endless summer parties that <laughs> we plan on. Uh, really so many party. endless summer parties. <laughs> <laughs> have their roots in Dana Point and it's yeah. so true. I know. We're, being, we're actually being true to our destination with our event design, yeah. so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and even to this day, like Surfing Bit plays <laughs> such a huge role in the Dana Point community. For sure. And the best beach for beginner surfers is at the north side of Doheny um, Beach in kind of like the south side of the harbor. Mm -hmm. There's a jetty right there. It has really nice smooth beginner waves for beginner surfers and if you're more advanced or intermediate head over to Strands Beach or Salt Creek Beach for some really awesome swells. <laughs> about Killer Dana recently. What yeah. happened with that? Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so in the 60s, the construction on the Dana Point Harbor began. Uh, it was right at the headland. That's where the harbor is located today. And it, it put an end to that Killer Dana wave. Wow, I can't imagine surfers were thrilled with that. No, and they weren't, and they protested, and mm -hmm. you know they were upset. Their voices weren't heard. It, you know, it, it ruined their surf spot, their rarity. Um, but the construction it continued on in the harbor, mm -hmm. and um, what they it was actually pretty awesome how they built it. So they started by um, building a whole um, jetty like a big encompassing area to um, stop the water from coming in. Then they transplanted all of the marine life and the shellfish and all the sea life. Then they pumped all the water out. Then they built the whole harbor up and the marina up. And then they broke where the temporary barrier is, which is now, you know, the opening. And all the water can kind of pump back in. So, yeah, they saved the yeah, sea life. They saved the sea life, not yeah. the life, <laughs> but the sea life. And the harbor was officially dedicated on July 31st, 1971. Today the harbor is the heart of Dana Point, being the center of most water and land activities and a bunch of boutique shopping and time-honored, loved by locals restaurants full of seafood and homestyle cooking. And while you're in Dana Point, water sports are a must-do while you're in town. We love cruising around the harbor on kayaks and paddle boards. You can rent them over um, by the Baby Beach. That's the best spot to launch your kayaks and paddle boards to do a full harbor cruise around um, the area. Check out the marina and all the ships and sailboats. Mm -hmm. um, and on the south end of the harbor near Doheny Beach, um, there's a handful of rental companies also, um, where in addition to stand-up paddle boarding and kayak rentals, you can rent jet skis, surfboards, and unique water toys mm -hmm. like the Mirage Eclipse, which is like <laughs> a pedal paddle board. Yeah, you got so. like a paddle board with handles and then you like got pedals that make you go, I don't know, it looks cool. It's kind of a workout, but yeah, <laughs> you need toys. <laughs> they also have parasailing over there, so yeah. if you uh, want to really get out for an adventure, that's pretty fun too. Yeah. From Dana Point Harbor, you can experience a Sunset Harbor cruise, charter a sailboat or a yacht, or head out for an iconic whale watching excursion. Whale watching and marine life viewing is great year round at Dana Point. Mm -hmm. From December to April is gray whale season, where these giants migrate from the Arctic waters in Alaska, where they spend their time feeding, to the warmer waters along the Baja coast, and that's where they have their mating area for mating season. Yeah, and well, in addition to the gray whales too, you may even spot a humpback whale, a mink whale, a mm -hmm. fin whale, or a rare sighting of an orca. And um, blue whale season is from May to November, so you know, gray whales and blue whales reverse. Um, and it's very likely you'll see a, a pod of common dolphins while you're out on your trip. Yeah, very likely. <laughs> I don't think I've been out on our coastal waters without seeing some dolphins. Dolphins, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, we recently went on a whale watching excursion from Dana Wharf mm -hmm. um, and saw a massive pod of common dolphins and bottomless dolphins. Yep. And then later we saw the Pacific white-sided dolphins and a very friendly humpback whale, which was really oh, yeah. amazing. That was so cool. He came right up to the boat <laughs> and like, we'll put the video on, but like you're 
right there. It was kept so coming under and oh, around, yeah. and it was very it was much checking us out. So that was super fun. Yeah, super not fun. Disappoint. And it was my first time ever whale watching. I've lived here my whole entire life, and I've never <laughs> been whale watching. So it was definitely like it wasn't my first time, but it was definitely the most memorable experience. Yeah, I'll never <laughs> forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Tail! Oh yeah, he's right down here. Right next to the boat, port side. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Well, in addition to all of the whale watching and ocean fun, another great way to fully experience Dana Point Harbor is to check out the Ocean Institute. The Ocean Institute is a community-based organization that educates the public through its 60 marine science and maritime history programs. These programs are designed to maximize immersion through their teaching labs. It's a great visit for families or adults that are looking to learn more about the area's geography, history, and marine life. Yeah, the Ocean Institute is also home to the tall ship schooner, the Spirit of Dana Point. It's a repli replica <laughs> of a privateer schooner used during the American Revolution and is known for its speed and was used for swimming. <laughs> <laughs> this was also the home to the replica of the Pilgrim, which was Richard Henry's Dana, uh, Richard Henry Dana's ship that he sailed on um, to the California coast. But sadly, in March 2020, um, the Pilgrim sank in its slip and they've demolished it fully. Uh, but last summer, or in the 2020, they did have an auction um, and raised money for the Institute. Yeah. Um, be sure to explore the harbor by foot um, and take in the beautiful views. The harbor also recently got an approval for a $330 million renovation that will break ground in 2022. So definitely stay tuned. There's uh -huh. much more to come on I'm all the I'm super changes. excited about it. Yeah, I mean, it should be really interesting and it'll really yeah. probably um, enrich and enlarge in kind of all the areas. I think so too. It's going to be good for the community and it'll keep Dana Point, you know, more competitive to Newport Harbor too, which you'll learn all about that. <laughs> If you take in the natural beauty of Dana Point, make sure you head up to the Dana Point Headland. That's the massive bluff that has a nice dedicated dirt trail and it gives you panoramic ocean views of Laguna Beach all the way to Dana Point. It's one of our personal favorite, like it's more of an easy hike, yeah. but it's beautiful. One of my favorite views of Orange County is on the top of the Dana Point Headland. So definitely check that out. You don't want to miss it. Another great 
great hike is on the shore directly below the um, Ocean Institute. Yeah. It's called the Dana Point Sea Cave. Um, you start on the back of the Ocean Institute. There's some steps that go down to the beach um, and you walk only about half a mile and you'll get to the um, iconic sea cave that was once used for smuggling um, mm -hmm. by pirates and sailors. The Dana Point Sea Cave is only accessible during low tide. Be sure to check the tide schedule before you start your hike. Even if it's low tide, there is a chance that the entrance to the sea cave might have some water. You might want to consider bringing some water shoes. We were able to enter the sea cave by walking on rocks that were only partially submerged in water. The rocks were kind of slippery, so you may not want to bring small children. explore Dana Point 2 on a bike or an e-bike. Mm -hmm. You can kind of cruise around PCH in the Lantern District or there's a bike path that starts at Doheny Beach and you can take it straight down all the way to San Clemente Pier or there's a point where you can turn left and kind of go under um, this bridge along the wash and that goes right into San Juan Capistrano. Both routes are like 11 miles round trip um, you know from Dana Point San Juan and back. Um, so they're really fun and really great way to kind of experience multiple towns. Thank you so much for tuning in and exploring Dana Point with us. Stay tuned as we'll be uh, posting a video about the foodie scene in Dana Point. There are tons of great restaurants to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Please give us that like, hit that notifications button, and subscribe to our channel to follow along our modern millennial events journey. Also, feel free to leave a comment about what your favorite water sport is mm -hmm. um, or what you plan to do on your next visit to Dana Point. Yeah, keep following along our Explore Like a Local series as we're venturing around our communities in Southern California. Thanks so much for following along. We'll see you next week.